Hey everybody, how are you? I hope your week has gone really great. In this video, I'm going to be focusing in on what I think is going to be a really fun topic here. Um, we're looking at the Allure Reader's Choice Awards makeup winners, and I have all of these products, and I'm going to be applying them for my full face look. And what really intrigued me about this list that I came across is the fact that there are some things I'd never tried, but also there are some really, like, long-standing products that maybe were talked about a lot in the makeup community like years ago, oldies but goodies you might say, mixed in with those newer things. And it just kind of reminded me that the whole makeup using community in this world is kind of different from the YouTube makeup community, you know? Not everyone and their brother is so focused on let me grab and love everything brand new, right? Because apparently if you give a lot of people a survey, they may stick to some old faithful products and that's what you're gonna see here. I think you're gonna be a little surprised as I was by some of these things. And it's pretty much gonna amount to a full face. I think for some reason there wasn't like a favorite powder listed, so I might fill in the blanks a little bit with a powder. But other than that, we're pretty much going at it with the winners on this list. So there were two different um, coverage type products that were mentioned. One of them was the Cosmetic CC Cream. Now I love that product. I think it's definitely worthy of a Reader's Choice Award. I think it's got coverage, it's got moisture, it's got SPF, it's doing so many things in one. And many of you guys probably know that I feel that way about that product. So I decided to purchase the other thing that they mentioned that was a winner. The It Cosmetics was the winner for BB CC Cream and the foundation is from a brand that I was not familiar with at all. It's called Vapor Organic Beauty Atmosphere Luminous Foundation. This was $46. Their little description of it says, a soothing antioxidant rich formula in a slim stick for targeted application guarantees an easy glow and a never heavy mask. So I have been playing with this and it's kind of a luminous stick foundation. It's something that gives me complete satisfaction right after I put it on, um, but the staying power is where I'm a bit let down by it. I'm gonna try to set it a little bit better today because I think in the past I hadn't done that so much. And I'm just kind of like normal skin, but if you're super oily, you might notice even more of a drastic breakdown with this product as the day goes on. And I did notice that mentioned in an article that Allure had done featuring this product. But this is the box that it came in and I just wanted to share this with you. 70% organic ingredients and 30% minerals and essential oils made with wind power. Inner and outer packaging is recyclable. Recycled fiber box printed with soy ink, no nanoparticles, and no iridation. It appears they covered their bases, folks, and there is going to be one other product from this brand um, in the lineup as well. So I got this Atmosphere Luminous Foundation in shade 120, and we're going to go ahead and put that on. I liked kind of smoothing it out with a brush, actually, and it glides on very easily. It's really smooth. So I'm just taking this all over the skin. I feel like it's kind of a medium coverage product. I wouldn't even really say buildable to full, like it, it just doesn't really seem to go quite that far. It has kind of a herbal scent to it. I don't know, that's really not the best description, but it makes me think of tea. Okay, and then I just take, this is my Sephora Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush. I'm just kind of obsessed with the size of this thing for blending out concealer, blending out foundation. And I have been kind of messing around with a lot of different stick foundations here because I felt like there was a lot of interest after I reviewed that um, Maybelline Superstay Cream to Powder stick. And there's such a wide range in stick foundations. Some are really dry, really matte. Some are ultra creamy, almost greasy. This one I don't think feels greasy at all. I wouldn't go there with it. But it does give the skin a little luminosity once applied. I think it looks really pretty on my skin but it's just the staying power is not super impressive with this. I feel like there have been a lot of hot concealer launches maybe in the past couple of years, but the one that won for this is actually the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And it says, there's a reason you voted for this highly pigmented liquid three years running. The coverage is buildable, but never cakes or cracks. Now this is always a concealer that I associated a little bit with being kind of dry on my skin. And I'm wondering if in the past, like we're talking years ago when I first started trying 
using this stuff if I was over applying it because more recently I've been testing it ahead of doing this video and I haven't really felt that way. I don't feel like it's super cakey. It's definitely not as nourishing to the under eye area as my Tarte Creaseless Concealer is. To me, this is a really matte concealer that I don't think you want to overuse, but I have it in the shade Vanilla and I am gonna just take this around my under eye. I'm gonna put it over here on my Melasma too. This shade that I have is like a, a little bit light, but it'll work. I'm gonna take it around my nose as well. I'm even gonna sort of highlight but this has been really fun to experiment with some of these products, some that were rediscovered, some that were new to me, some that I just really, really like as well. So you can see the coverage we're getting here. Um, I think I could go like a shade or two darker on this, honestly, but we're making it work and it's kind of acting highlighter-ish on my skin right now. And I did notice in the times that I've paired this concealer with that foundation stick, like, even though the foundation stick seems to kind of fade overall on my skin, the concealer does hang on. Like, those areas don't look super faded. I feel like it is covering my melasma well enough. When I turn certain ways, I can still almost see it a little bit again. Sorry, something else needed blended there. Now, where I'm a little dry, like up here between the brows, where I put a little bit of that, or sometimes around the sides of my nose. I'm seeing the product more there. There's just a little bit of a clinginess happening. I guess my take on this is that, yes, it's a good coverage concealer, but I think dry skin can do better. Um, I think there are better things out there for you. I've explained the Tarte Maracuja. I just think that's really good, the Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. There's so much moisture in that. There's so much amazing coverage in it. Now, guys, there was not a favorite or a Reader's Choice powder mentioned in this list, so I think I'm just gonna take take a little bit of one of my own because I do think it's going to benefit the especially the places where I have just the stick foundation to have a little bit of setting powder and I'm going to use my Milani prep set and glow this is just a one tone like translucent powder and I really like the finish on my skin so I'm going to let this go lightly over where my concealer is and just buff it in everywhere else it just is a powder that doesn't look completely flat and matte you know Additionally, I might just add a little bit of bronzer, which was also not on the list. This is my Makeup Geek Bronzer in Tawny. I do love this tone. I'm just going to put a little bit of this around the hairline. Down the neck, I'm just right kind of cheekbone area. The next thing in the lineup is blush, and the winner there is the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12-Hour Blush. It says, for a natural pinch, pinched cheek flush without the pain, swipe one of these 13 shades over the apples of your cheeks. And I have a variety of these in my collection. I pulled out the shade called Exposed because I remembered in just, you know, a few years ago on YouTube, this shade was really, really hot. And I do like it because it's one of those sneaky, unusual blush shades where you glance at it and you think, what the heck is that actually going to do? And then I will apply it for you and you'll be like, oh, that's pleasant. But this is one of those examples of things that doesn't really get talked about that much in the YouTube community, but that apparently other makeup users, makeup lovers are really still clinging to, you know? See that nice little flush? There's kind of an unexpected little bit of corally warmth to this. Now I was starting to wonder because the article that I was reading online listed like 11 different beauty favorites. They had a nail polish and like a brush thrown in there that I didn't get, but, but they listed these online and then I started to think, I wonder if there were more listed like in a magazine somewhere, like where they included a powder or a bronzer or something. But it is kind of hard to argue with this blush. I feel like it's really pretty and it does have good staying power. Now I am quite surprised that there was no highlighter on this list. Um, I think I'll add a little of my own here. This is Makeup Geek Starlight. Just a bit with my Moda Highlight and Glow brush. Love this brush for highlighter. Just adds a little something. I love a little highlight. Really on the apples of my cheeks more than anything, I feel like these days. That area can really take some highlight for me, you know? It's smooth. There's nothing really wrong with it. I'll highlight that. And then I'm going to do just a spritz or two of my Makeup Revolution Hyaluronic Fix Spray. And I do feel like that kind of pulls everything together. So um, next up, what I'm going to do off camera is just 
throw on my brows because there wasn't a specific brow thing listed, put on some eye primer, and then I will show you the surprising palette that was the Reader's Choice Award winner. We're back, browed and primed and ready. And by the way, on the blushes, there wasn't a specific shade listed. It was just Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes, so that's why I chose Exposed. That was just my choice. In another category here coming up, you'll see there was a very specific shade mentioned of something. But as for eyeshadow, the top thing is the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. Does this seem out of left field to anybody else? Like, I'm sure it's popular and I'm sure it still probably sells really well, but there's just so much being cranked out palette-wise and so much that has come out since this was at the height of its hotness, I think. It just kind of surprised me, but I kind of love it. I kind of love that that's the situation here, that the general public, you know, has a long-standing old faithful thing that really is a true favorite to them. Personally, I've always kind of preferred the Naked One over this one. I just always thought of it as having more variety, more versatility in looks. This one has a lot of cool things going on, but it also has half-baked and it has like a rose gold too. Maybe it's more versatile than I've been giving it credit for, but I'm gonna do a look with it now and y'all at home can grab yours too and we can do it together. Um, here's Tease. I'm gonna use that one. That's that matte kind of murky, mauve -y. what's the word I'm looking for? Dusty lavender. But there's some depth to it. Dusty light plum. I don't know. It's a real hard to put your finger on shade, but it's matte and it's mid-tone so it kind of makes a good place to start here for a crease color. Here's a question I want to know in the comments section. When was the last time you used your Naked 2 palette? Did you once have it and don't have it anymore? Like, what's the status of Naked 2 in your life? But I will give it this. It can do a very dramatic eye because there is a complete and 100% black in this palette. And so it can go there. It can go very dark if you want it to, but it can be pretty light and natural too. It's one of those palettes that does give me kind of a bridal vibe, you know, for it not being too incredibly warm and actually containing a lot of classic shades. I'm gonna take Foxy and just kind of blend over the edge of what I did there and use it as a highlight. It's kind of a buttery shade, Foxy is there at the end. And then maybe for a little glow, we'll use Booty Call. <laughs> Booty Call, right up here under the high point of the brow. And I'm just using my Sigma E40 brush there. I always tend to use that for just bare blending and then um, when I wanna highlight a certain area up, use that. What you might feel like this palette is lacking a little bit of is some other dark, deep mattes outside of just the complete 100% black because Busted is sort of just this deep shimmery plum, but matte-wise, there's not a lot else to choose from. In fact, I feel like I've said in an old review that I was always going to the same deeper shade, which was Busted, because I didn't always feel like using black, and that was the only other really deep option. I'm gonna take some YDK right here. I kind of remember loving this color. Taupey, really shiny metallic. Yes, that's a pretty shade. Like a taupe with a hint of rose. And then maybe on the innermost part, I'll put a little bit of chopper kind of right in here. There's your real rose goldness kind of popping out there. And then maybe let's put some booty call right here. I've been doing this a lot with this flat brush, just kind of stamping it right over my inner corner. I was experimenting this past weekend with a halo eye on me where I had it really dark here and here and kept a super light pop right in the center. And I thought it looked phenomenal when I was looking down. <laughs> just for a photo of this really kind of exaggerated eye look, I thought that looks nice in the picture, but just like looking up with my eyes open, maybe it just is gonna take more practice for me, but I didn't think my inner part looked really, really flattering on me. I don't know, I just, I love more darkness toward the outside on my eyes and that's just, I'm allowed, I know. Maybe we should add in a little bit of the black for contrast here, blackout. Why not, right? Let's go there. Yes, it's 6.20 and I wanna put on black eyeshadow, okay? I am such a build it up slowly person with eyeshadow though. Like, I'll take just the tiniest bit that I can get on my brush, dab it on lightly, and then I might go back for more. I have no opposition to a dramatic look, but I just, I'll build it up slowly till I get there to the dramatic point. And then I'll use my little Morphe M506 and I'm going into blackout still 
but now I can get it into my crease a little better. This is the brush, by the way, if you've missed some of my videos, I was oftentimes reaching for an MUA Makeup Academy 315 brush that was basically identical to this, but a lot of people were like, I, I can never find that at CVS, I don't know where to come up with that same type of small, you know, really pinpointed outer corner type brush. And um, then when I was doing my Morphe video, I discovered this on Ulta's website and I realized, oh, this could be the good alternative. Just giving myself this little kind of smoky, hazy outer corner with the matte black here. Just working real slowly with it. I tend to go in little like circular motions sort of with my brush. And that just kind of tends to take the product where it needs to be. Go up a little bit. And then maybe it might be fun to take a little bit of chopper actually and just kind of let that come up over the edge here. Because nothing cools down a look like black. So this kind of is a fun little pairing alongside the black blending up above it with that rose gold kind of shade. Because even though it looks crazy metallic, maybe even sparkly in the palette, when you sheer it out with a brush like this, you really just get the color payoff from that shade, which is a soft copper, sort of. It's only when you build it up and pack it on that it really starts to look super dramatic, right? I'm kind of loving this look. For the lower lash line, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a plum liner. This was not in the Beauty Favorites. There is an eyeliner, but it's not a pencil. So I'm gonna use this um, M80 Aqua XL from Makeup Forever. I'm just gonna put this for a little bit of depth in my lower inner rim, so kind of a plummy shade. And I'm gonna get that kind of smudging among the lashes too. It doesn't have to be precise, just like get it on there because then we're gonna smudge it out with a smudge brush. And then I'm gonna take the deep plum from the palette and further like go over everything with my pencil brush. Sound like a plan, team? Okay. So here's my E21 smudge brush from Sigma that I love so much. So I'm taking that pencil only. No product is on this brush. But I'm just using that to soften up the pencil that I dotted just kind of like right in between the lashes. Think of this step as like loosening that up a little bit. And then with an even softer brush, a pencil brush, I'm gonna go into Busted right here, suck it from the end. This is that plummy shade with kind of a satiny finish. And I'm gonna smoke this out just all across that line. It's not screaming at you, Plum, but it's definitely, it's got a presence. Kind of unexpected when you look at the top part of the eye. And that, my friends, is Naked too. Woohoo! The top eyeliner pick is from Kat Von D, and it's the Tattoo Liner. And there isn't a specific shade listed in this, but I know it comes in Trooper, which is the black. And I have a shade that lives in my purse for false lash emergencies, and it's a super dark brown. But this says the Ultimate Glossy Black Non-Smudging Liquid Liner. And it does have a brush tip, which is really handy. I've been experimenting with another brush tip one from M Cosmetics. Maybe I should test them against each other, because the M Cosmetics... I can tell has really incredible staying power. So it might need to be tested against this one, but this is an awesome format for an eyeliner. And the next best drugstore alternative would probably be from Physician's Formula. I talked about this in my last video, but it's called like Eye Booster and it's got a brush tip. But brush tips are just, they are so easy to get across the lash lines. Like you get that precision that you might get out of an inkwell design type liner, but the control of being able to hold it like a pen or pencil. And I'm not gonna wing this look out because I just don't feel like it really calls for it today. I'm rocking this kind of more grungy, smoky look with this. And sometimes when I do a wing, I think it almost makes a look seem a little more delicate. Unless you got like a super fierce big wing. It's so black. I did kind of double up over my line um, going across this area where I had the really shimmery shade, but honestly, like, it was not a pain at all. Went across my lash line really quickly. If you're a beginner with liquid liner, a brush tip pen would be a great place to start. Now what? We got mascara. Okay. I wholeheartedly agree with this decision. Uh, the reader's choice is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. I love this stuff. Uh, it says the fluffy brush is 200 bristles strong and coats every lash with rich, shiny color. Non-clumping formula stays where it's supposed to and doesn't drift under your eyes. I can vouch for that. It also tends to hold my curl pretty well, but I do have to curl first to get to that point. So I'm gonna curl my lashes here. I think my liner was dry. Uh-oh, we'll find out. When I'm really serious about getting my mascara on, I get my mirror just like right up under me and I tilt my chin up 
so I can really see the lash getting coated, not just at the tips, which is sometimes all you see if you hold your mirror straight out, but hold it down under your chin and you can see those lashes getting coated from the very base. And make sure you're kind of like giving your brush a rotation every so often so you're not continuously getting coated by the same portion of the brush. So I was absolutely astounded when I was in my doing my Nordstrom video. I was looking at the comments and I had mentioned that MAC lipstick set and one of the shades was Twig. And I was like, I don't know how I haven't used this shade before, but it really feels like me, this Twig color. And I know that's been around a long time in MAC's collection. But when somebody commented that that was Joey's signature shade in Dawson's Creek, I was like, like I texted Bub, <laughs> we're watching Dawson's Creek. We had started from the beginning. Uh, I think I'm somewhere in season two right now and I'm just, I am so beyond hooked. It's not even funny. But when somebody said that's what Joey wore, I thought you're kidding. I guess I can see that, you know? It's a good 90s color. The funny thing is that Joey was just very much like a natural beauty but every so often she would throw on a lipstick. <laughs> That's what I've noticed. Are there any TV shows that you've gone back to that you'd maybe just seen sporadically before? Maybe you loved them like a long time ago. For me, Dawson's Creek was something I only caught little bits and pieces of. And um, now that I'm watching it full out, I'm completely obsessed. I'll go ahead and get a little bit of this on the lower lashes because I, I do kind of trust it there. It's not the A number one best on my lower lashes. We all know what that is. CoverGirl Clump Crusher Water Resistant. Now guys, we have made it to lips. And I mentioned that there was one thing here that had a specific shade that was pointed out as the favorite. Let's talk about the lip gloss first. I don't necessarily feel like I wanna layer these two different lipstick and lip gloss. So I'll end on the lipstick, but I'll try on the gloss for you. It's the NYX Butter Gloss in Creme Brulee. Here's another one of those that kind of takes me back. There was a time when NYX Butter Gloss was really having a heyday here on YouTube along with the Naked Palettes. And yet we see it here winning Reader's Choice Awards. And so it says, want your lips but better, reach for this peachy nude YouTuber and allure reader staple. There you go. I have loved Creme Brulee. It's a beautiful shade. I repurchased this one recently. So let's pop it on for you. Creme Brulee really does work for me and I think it's especially pretty over like a neutral kind of mid-tone nude lip liner and then you pop this on as your nude gloss. It can be really pretty. Generally speaking, what I like best from the Better Gloss line are the mid-tone shades. I just feel like they give you the most evenness of color or I love the intense better glosses. Those are so flawless and beautiful. But if you need a nude lip gloss, a little bit of a peachy nude, very pretty, right? And it is very comfortable, a really nice formula. And I feel like my two bookends of this video are vapor products because the best lipstick is from that Vapor Beauty brand, the same brand that made the uh, foundation stick. And the top lipstick is the Vapor Organic Beauty Siren Lipstick. There wasn't a specific shade listed, so I ended up with the one in 416 Intuition. It says, it's not surprising that these oil-infused colors are uber hydrating, but that the intense color stays put is near miraculous. This is $25, by the way. And it's kind of unique in that it is just flat <laughs> at the top. When I first got it, I wondered if maybe it just melted down in the tube, like was it once a formed stick? But no, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is the only one of these that I've tried and I could see maybe staying power varies depending on shade. Like maybe you get a lot deeper shade. It's really like staining your lips and hanging in there. What I have here is probably somewhere in the middle toward the deepish end of the lineup. And I thought staying power is just kind of average, but I think the look on my lips is gorgeous. So. Let's just show. What do we call this? A soft red with a splash of mauve? And it doesn't have that like kind of natural herbal tea vibe that the foundation stick had. This smells quite fruity and nice. It kind of smells to me like you just opened a packet of Jello and took a little whiff of it. It's like some of the powderiness goes airborne and you catch a whiff. Like that's kind of what this reminds me of. It's quite fruity. It feels really smooth on the lips. There's a nice thickness. Going any darker than this, here's my issue. It's kind of hard to get really precise. I don't know why they didn't make it just a little bit more formed because it is kind of hard to get the Cupid's bow really clean, but it can be done but it's not the kind of thing I would just throw on without a mirror. A lighter shade of this might be a lot more forgiving, but 
this color or any darker than this color, you're going to need to watch yourself around the outer edges. But I do like the product. It feels very balmy and comfortable, and I think that color is outstanding. I tried to neaten up my bun a little bit there for the finished look. So what do we think about all this Reader's Choice Awards stuff? Um, I mean, I think the foundation stick was a really nice feeling formula going on, a nice finish on the skin. I'm not sure how much you could pick up on it, but there was a little, like, luminosity to it practically. And while I really like that initial look that it gives my skin, um, I'm not so impressed with the staying power. So it's not going to be something I reach for often. I might find that I get better results from this in the winter time, perhaps, when I'm not exposing it to so much humidity and potentially sweat, you know, on my skin. The NARS concealer is not a real favorite for me, although I will say retrying it and rediscovering it as I've been testing these uh, products, it's a little better than I remembered. And I think it's because I'm using less product than I probably used to. Could I have used a little deeper shade today? Yes, I think so. But overall formula wise, it's not my top pick um, for under eye area, melasma. That This is the main zone of concealing for me. And that Tarte Creaseless Concealer, I gotta tell you, that stuff is amazing. I think I am going to be reaching for my Tarte Exposed Blush more because this was a fun little rediscovery. It really is a beautiful shade. My Naked Dew palette, one of the biggest surprises in this mix was the fact that this is so popular among the Allure readers. Obviously, Urban Decay is not going to go changing anything, but I mean, I, I could have used a little more versatility and options in the deeper department because I feel like we do have a lot of range here among the mid-tones. The Kat Von D Tattoo Liner is a really outstanding product. I mean, that goes on with so much ease. A brush tip, whether you get it from this brand, M Cosmetics, or Physician's Formula, a brush tip pen is such an easy way to get your liner on. I'm a total believer in my L'Oreal Lash Paradise, so I was glad that that was in the mix. NYX Butter Gloss, you know, that's a solid lip gloss. The Creme Brulee, if you need a nude gloss, sure, go for it. And I really enjoy this color. This Intuition is the shade of this Vapor Lipstick. I think I might even like the lipstick a little more than the foundation stick, actually. I think this is a gorgeous shade. You don't always run into a lot of brands, including a nice soft red in their lineup, right? And that's kind of what this amounts to for me. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you'd like to see more of this kind of video in the future. I know Allure does their Best of Beauty award winners as well, and other magazines always do this kind of ranking, but it's fun to actually test it. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you soon. Bye!